The first to jump into the pool was healed. So no one gave him a chance. Come on, somebody. Everybody was there for themselves. Maybe they were practicing what we always say, everyone for himself and God for everybody. A community of people who were just self-centered on themselves. Because everybody who was there had a need. And they want to jump first. Perhaps that speaks about our community, my brothers and my sisters, the challenge that we may have in our community on how we respond to those in need around us. Maybe sometimes we are not willing to extend compassion to our brothers and sisters. Maybe we overlook those who are suffering. This text is telling us that Jesus noticed this man who was suffering. And Jesus was willing to heal the man. Jesus went to the man and said, do you want to get well? Come on, Jesus. I've been here for 38 years. And every time the angel comes, nobody's helping me. Everybody has abandoned me, even my own family. This man, my brothers and my sisters, has developed a kind of victim mentality, which is different from the story we read last Sunday, because last Sunday we saw this woman with the issue of blood who took action. She went where Jesus was, and she believed that if I can only touch Jesus Christ, something good will happen to me. But in this case, we see this man who has internalized suffering. He has made the abnormal become normal for him because he was not expecting anything new. He was just even looking at Jesus Christ as just this another good fellow who's talking to him. Maybe when the angel will come, he will jump into the water. Perhaps he may say, this man is just clever. He's just talking to me, waiting for the opportunity to jump into the water. And this man began to talk to Jesus Christ. And Jesus is asking this person a personal question, a question that highlights personal responsibility in the process of healing and transformation. Jesus is saying to this person, do you want to get well? Perhaps, my brothers and my sisters, this morning, Christ is calling us to raise the question of our own willingness to change and to heal. Because change is always possible if we choose to change. Do you know that? Personal responsibility in terms of participating in the process of healing. Personal responsibility in terms of changing all oh, my brothers and my sisters so that our spiritual and physical well-being all can take place. You know how many times we cling to our excuses all the time? We are full of excuses. Do you want to get well? The answer was, yes, I want to get well. Throw me into the water. Now, Jesus did something a little bit different here. He tried to change the focus of the man because this man was used to see the angel coming to stir up the water. That was the tradition. That was what was known. The water had that healing power that when the angel come down, Everybody, the first person to go into the pool will get well. Now Jesus is changing that. Jesus is redirecting the faith of this man toward Jesus Christ because Jesus is giving this man an order, a command, and say, get up, pick up your mat, and walk. The man is saying, Jesus, I have nobody to help me here. Jesus is saying, get up, pick up your mat, and walk. I'm the only one who does the job. No one is volunteering anymore. Get up, pick up your mat, and walk. Perhaps in this text we see Jesus calling us to action. That we are called, that we are called to rise above, my brothers and my sisters, if we are going to overcome our spiritual, our spiritual paralysis and stagnation, if we are going to rise above that and move forward in our faith, perhaps we need to hear the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, who's saying, get up and pick up your mat and walk. You know how many times we have stopped doing what is right because of other people, actions or decision or behavior. I've seen Christians giving up 
on doing what is right because other people have made decisions or other people are not doing right. You cannot stop doing what is right because of me, my, my actions or because of the action of an institution. You cannot stop doing what is right because of other people. You cannot blame someone else and because of their behavior, you stop believing, you stop doing what is right. Get up, pick up your mat and walk. A call to action. Rise above your circumstances. Do what is right in the sight of God. You know how many times we have a tendency to give up? Give up on ourselves, give up on what we believe. You know, I heard someone saying, I have stopped helping people because one person has lied to you, to me. Just because one person has lied to you, that's not a reason to stop helping other people. Come on, somebody. That's not the reason. We are called to do what is right. We are called, is a command. Jesus is redirecting, is changing the focus of the person. Don't focus on the ritual. Don't focus on what has been taking place in your tradition. Rise up, rise up, get up, get up, pick up your mat and walk. What is the state of your own spiritual state? How are you doing? Perhaps we too have been paralyzed by fear, by doubt, by sin. What are the steps that God is calling us for us to take so that we can respond to Jesus' call to rise and to walk in the newness of life? What is it that we need to do? I'm tired. I just give up. I can no longer do this. I can no longer do that. Can you imagine if Christ has given up on us? Then he would have not gone to the cross. In Gethsemane, Jesus saw the pain and the suffering of the cross. He was abandoned by his friends. The disciples left him alone. There in Gethsemane, him and God had a tough conversation. Yet Jesus said, I can hear. I can hear you calling my name. I can hear. And I will walk, I will go with you all the way. Jesus surrender in Gethsemane. He said, not my will, but your will. He died on the cross. Can you imagine if he had given up on us? Then there will be no salvation. Because if Jesus Christ did not die on the cross, then there will be no resurrection. And if Jesus Christ was not raised from the dead, then our faith in is in vain. Our faith is useless in vain. If Christ did not die and come back to life, then the Christian faith will be just another theory, another things in the history of humanity. But thank God he did not give up on us. Thank God he went to the cross even when the pain and the suffering on the cross was too much, when he cried, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Yet he said, into thy hand I surrender my spirit. He died on the cross. Oh, my brothers and my sisters, God was able to bring him to life. The same God who brought Jesus Christ back to life is the same God who gave the power to Jesus Christ to perform all the miracles that Jesus performed. And among the miracles that Jesus performed was the healing of this man who was suffering for 38 years. I don't know how long you've been suffering. I don't know how long you've been praying for something. I just want you to have faith and have that sense of faith and trust in Jesus. Yes, I know how long it is painful, but I want you to hold on to have a little bit of faith. Because God can do anything. All things are possible with God. Come on, somebody. All things are possible with God. Let us not give up on our faith. Let us not give up on the promises of God. Oh, let's claim those promises of God. Let's have faith, oh, my brothers and my sisters. Jesus gave that command to the man. Take action. Get up. Forget about your circumstances. Forget about the people who did not help you. Forget about your family that has abandoned you. Forget about this community that does not care about you. Oh, but stand up. Stand up. 
get up, pick up your mat, and walk. In other words, Jesus not only is giving this man command to stand, Jesus is even giving this man command, forget about your religion, because according to his religion, you are not supposed to walk during the Sabbath. Can you imagine Jesus performing a miracle on the Sabbath, breaking religious norms? Come on, somebody. The religious leader saw the man walking instead of focusing on what God has done. Instead of focusing on the miracle, they began to question who healed you. They did not focus on the person. They forgot that human beings are more important than the law. They did not focus on the miracle. They missed the point. They were so rigid in their thinking and their legalism. Jesus broke the rules of the Sabbath, teaching us that human beings are more important. Oh, my brothers and my sisters, the human beings and their needs are more important because human beings are more important to God. Human needs should take precedence over our rigid adherence to the rules. Our strict interpretation of the law must not must not take over the needs of human beings. My brothers and my sisters, compassion is more important than our legalism. Compassion is more important than our religious formality. If you don't agree with me, just go to John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that God gave his son so that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. You know, sometimes we can cling to our strict interpretation of the law. It's not enough for us to just know the law. We got to practice compassion. We got to practice the love of God. We got to become the living word of God. We are to become the living compassion of God to our brothers and sisters. It's not enough to know scripture from the book of Genesis to the book of Revelation. We are to become the word of God for the people that we come into contact with. You know, in this country, everybody knows the scripture. Sometimes I wonder if 10 years from now, me and Reverend Amanda will still have a job. By the way, I'll be 62, I'll be retiring. I feel sorry for you, because I don't know if you're still going to have a job, okay? I don't know what you're trying to do now. Because you see, everybody knows the scripture in our society. Today, with artificial intelligence, you can put a scripture somewhere there and, and hear a sermon. Oh, yes. Everybody knows the scripture, and everybody is quoting scripture. People from all uh, preferences, whatever theology it is, the liberals, they quote scripture. The conservatives quote scripture. The progressives quote scripture. Everybody quotes scripture. Just because a politician quotes scripture does not make that person a Christian. Just because you quote scripture does not make you a child of God. Just because you know the Bible does not make you a Christian. Come on, somebody. God is calling us to become, to become the living word of God. In this community, Jesus became the light of God to this man who was paralyzed. Because at least he had somebody who was talking to him, somebody who was concerned about him, and is asking him, do you want to feel well? At least he had an opportunity to express himself, how he felt inside, how he was abandoned, and how the community has let him down. And it was part of the healing process because he's talking about it until Jesus said, get up and he felt the strength of God and he stood there because somebody, somebody was talking to him. Oh, my brothers and my sisters, let us become the living word. Let us become the living word of God for our brothers and sisters. Let us not just quote the Bible. Bible must not be used as a weapon, as a weapon against our brothers and sisters. Yes, let us become the living word of God for our community. Because when we become the living word for our community, oh, we will become true witness of God. Christ says, I'm sending you. Go and become my witness. When you and I become true witness of God, the Lord's prayer will become a reality. God's kingdom will come on earth. As we pray, let your kingdom come. 
Oh, my brothers and my sisters, the religious leader, they just was concerned about the Sabbath and the regulations associated with the Sabbath. They are rigid thinking and legalism blind their vision that they couldn't see the miracle that took place. A man who was there for 38 years, start walking. Is something important to talk about than you asking him, who asked you to walk? Why are you picking your map and walk? Come on, come on. Uh, 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 uh. I don't see. I, I just don't get it. For 38 years, this person was there. You knew, you saw him, and now this man is walking. All you can see is to ask him a question, who gave you permission to pick up your mat? Don't you know is this the Sabbath? Come on. I know if you were there, you will say, I'm not coming there the next Sunday. I am not coming in that church. That's all the preacher saw. He saw that I picked the mat. Never even noticed that I was walking after 38 years. They allow their rigid thinking and legalism blind them from seeing the hands of God. They did not recognize God's hands working in, an, in some unexpected place. They did not see God's working in places. You know, sometimes we have in our mind, oh, God can only work this way, God can work. No, we cannot limit God. We cannot contain God within our frame of understanding. God is bigger than our theology. God is bigger than our understanding. God is bigger than this church. God is bigger than our denomination. God is bigger. If we are not ready for God, God can, God can even use the street to promote God's agenda. All God is asking us is to participate to be available and to be part of what God is doing in the world. There was a miracle that took place that day. And I want to emphasize to finish with this aspect of living with that expectation. God can intervene in our lives. God can intervene. What is a miracle? A miracle is when the supernatural intervene into the natural processes. God created the natural processes, the law of gravitation, all these, God created them. But God can interfere, God, God can intervene to do something outside of the normal. So let us live our life with that sense of expectation that God can visit us, God can intervene into our situation, that a miracle can take place. We are not alone. God is concerned about all the small details of our lives. Let's live with that sense of expecting God's grace and favor. I understand there was many people who were not feeling well that day, and Jesus only dealt with this person. Now, you know, someone may say, okay, I don't know. Maybe it's not my turn. That's none of your business. Why God, why Jesus did not heal everybody at the poor? Uh -uh. I don't want to go into that philosophical way of thinking. I just believe that I can be a benefactor of this favorable notice, that God can notice me. So live your life with that sense of expectation because God can notice you too. God can notice you. And when God notices you, you will never, 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 never be the same again because this man was never the same again. And I'm encouraged because this man did not even have the faith to believe because when Jesus began to talk to him, he did not even recognize that it was Jesus until Jesus revealed who Jesus was. The grace of God, the compassion of God, and the mercy of God, unlimited, available for everyone. Let us live our life with that sense that God can visit us anytime. Don't fall into the pit of despair and hopelessness. You are not alone. Because with God, all things are possible. Come on, somebody. With God, all things are possible. With God, all things are possible. I want you to live with that sense of celebrating, knowing that God can intervene and interfere into our lives anytime. To God be the glory. What a friend we have in Jesus. He promised. 
he will never leave us and he will never forsake us. Let all of God's people say it, amen. amen. And if you are able, would you please stand on your feet as we are singing our closing hymn. Savior still our rest. 